Plug and HITC Sport are right. Let's take a look at every Premier League team and find what other club has continuously mugged them off on the transfer market time and time again. It begs the question that when you see some of these transfers, you just think, why would you ever do business with that club again? Some of these deals are just embarrassing. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Man City. Yeah, I remember when Man City were sniffing around Alexis Sanchez. I'm convinced that would have triggered PTSD flashbacks amongst the Arsenal hierarchy. Price, there was probably blood and vomit coating the border walls. Because City had spent years turning this one great club into their factory. Since the takeover, they've taken Colo Torre, Emmanuel Alabayor, Gail Clichy, Samir Nasri, crucial first team players. And let's not forget they tried to take Rob Van Persie as well. Not to mention employing the club's heroic legendary captain for eight bastard years, purely for no other reason than they could. I wouldn't be surprised to see them hire Arsene Wenger just to clean the canteen toilets. Just another form of asserting their dominance over Arsenal. Ask the Villa at Man City. Okay, don't worry lads, I haven't put Man City for every team. Uh, but with Villa, again, it's true. They've been fleeced by City so many times. Where do we start? Hmm, how about City stealing away their captain and one club man, Gareth Barry, for a big fat bang of cash in 2009? Or depriving them of future Premier League and Champions League winning James Milner before he'd even hit his peak? They returned for another captain in 2015, this time signing Fabian Delft. A move that probably still leaves most Villa fans permanently tasting vomit on their tongue. Even before they got rich, they were luring away the homegrown Villa England international Darius Vassell. In terms of going the other way, yeah, okay, Richard Dunn was one signing that did well for Villa, but they were also given a pass to Che Given, a terrible Scott Sinclair, and even £20 million Douglas Louise is on track to becoming a big financial stain on relegated finances. So Villa, stop doing business with Man City. Bournemouth, Liverpool. Bournemouth are about to get relegated. They could do with an apology from Liverpool. Lads, clearly the Bournemouth board just don't know how to negotiate like normal human beings. Liverpool, they, they just took advantage of them. Demanding a combined £40 million pounds for Dominic Salanka and Jordan Ibe. It's like selling a pair of teaspoons for 20 quid to a f***ing six-year-old child. They also tricked Bournemouth into coughing up £3 million pounds for Brad Smith. You might not think £3 million is all that much, but lads, anything more than a pack of Skittles and a bag full of pubic hair is too much for Brad Smith. Sure, Nathaniel Klein and Harry Wilson were decent loan arrivals, but even the latter just spent the game stuck in the stands wearing a Liverpool coat. The absolute disrespect. Not to mention Liverpool's interest in Ryan Fraser has practically melted his brain to the extent where he just doesn't want to help out on a relegation scrap. It's official, Liverpool have relegated this poor little club. Brighton Sunderland. Okay, this isn't too bad, but, but still, Sunderland probably pissed off the majority of the Brighton fan base when Gus Poyer kept trying to nick his former players, like when they wrestled away Will Buckley in 2014 and stealing Liam Bridcott one year earlier. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it's bit of an inconvenience. Burnley Stoke. Okay, Burnley have an unhealthy obsession with signing Stoke players. So in the past 20 years they've taken 14. 14 players and guess what lads, they are mostly panda diarrhea. Yes, Eric Peters and Phil Barsley, two no-nonsense full backs. I guess they've been half decent signings, but nothing that's gonna get your heart rate up. And Peter Crouch, a 39 year old head on a stick. John the Walters wound up an injury trouble mess. Michael Kitely, Leon Court, Wayne Thomas, Gifted Noel Williams, Ade Akambai. Absolute garbage. Stop shopping at Stoke. Chelsea Liverpool. Lads, it's not often Chelsea get done over in the transfer market, but Liverpool have consistently had their number. Not only did they somehow convince Chelsea to cough up a British record £50 million for Fernando Torres, it took him 24 games to score a goal, and by contrast, Liverpool then paid Chelsea £12 million, literally one-fifth of the Spaniards' transfer fee, for Daniel Sturridge, and he scored over 30 goals in his first 18 months at the club as they nearly won the title. Just £12 million! Pounds. What were Chelsea thinking? And Liverpool somehow tricked Chelsea into paying actual legal tender for a pass that you see better Yoon. Liverpool also shook them down for Raul Mireles, a Portuguese midfielder who couldn't wait to leave England. Oh yeah, and let's not forget that Liverpool wouldn't sell them Steven Gerrard. Chelsea, for your own sake, stop doing business with Liverpool. It never ends well. Crystal Palace, Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool yet again screwing over another football club. Just like Bournemouth, Centers Park is another dumping ground for overpriced Liverpool rejects. That's how are Crystal Palace still afloat when this is the standard of their negotiating skill? Palace have given Liverpool like about 55 million pounds for both Christian Benteke and Mamadou Sacco. 55 million quid and a combined 200,000 pounds a week. It's where Liverpool were trying to bankrupt the club. Everton Man United. Oh, lads, this is... This is, this is embarrassing. Sure, Everton have made a lot of money out of Man United, but it also looks like they only exist to provide them with strikers. Both Wayne Rooney and Romelu Lukaku, the two greatest Everton strikers of the Premier League era, were both sold Old Trafford, and they also had Mara Fellaini ripped out of their starting eleven. And what do they get in return? The washed up injury pro Jasper Blomqvist, Darren Gibson and Louis Saha, 
all three bought to soak up wages in the treatment room. Also being tricked into paying 25 million pounds for Morgan Schneiderlin. Whoever sanctioned that deal should probably have his nose ripped clean off his face. Sure, Phil Neville was a good signing, but Tom cleverly, the return of a past that had used up Rooney for 200 grand a week. It's a relationship where Everton happily offer up their best players while simultaneously ridding them of their garbage. Everton, you're a big club. Stop this! Leicester at Man City. Leicester City must hate Man City during a transfer window. Not only did City unsettle Real Madrid to the point he was writing letters begging to quit the club, such was his determination to leave, they were allowed to pick him up for just 60 million quid. Considering Philip Coutinho cost double that price, considering Harry Maguire, a fridge shaped centre half, he went for more cash. I think Leicester got massively ripped off and agreeing to pay a club record 25 million pounds for Clichy Ihianacho, who three years later is still waiting for his 10th league goal for the club. Not to mention City have used the King Power as their own private toilet for years. Greg Cunningham, Ryan McGivern, Barry McCarthy, Michael Johnson, and only 40 year old Paul Dickoff. Lads, these weren't footballers Man City wanted to hang on to. They viewed them on the same par as the f***ing battle movements. Liverpool, Real Madrid. Alright, you probably all think the answer is Barcelona. Javier Mascherano, Luis Suarez, I might agree. Have the Catalans not willingly put 120 million into Liverpool's pocket for Felipe Coutinho? I'll go with Real Madrid instead, who took Xabi Alonso for a cup price 30 million quid, tore away the reliable right back Laura Arbeloa for just 5 million pounds, took a cult hero Champions League winning jersey Dudek just to make him rot on the bench, and managed to steal away Michael Owen, at the time the club's golden god, for less than, than 10 million quid. Oh yeah, and they also robbed him of Steve McManaman in the 90s, one of the most naturally gifted wingers Anfield has ever seen. And in return, Liverpool have taken Fernando Morientes, Antonio Nunes, and Nori all three of them overpriced, overhyped duds in English football. Man City, Chelsea. Okay, since the takeover, Man City haven't really been out negotiated by anybody. Nobody in the transfer market has made that club their prison bitch, their shower buddy, nobody. Because how can you compete? I mean, I'm guessing they've probably banned any future manager from ever buying from Swansea City again. If you're tricked into paying over £35 million pounds for Wilfred Boney and Scott Sinclair, it's a bit like if an Indian takeaway gives you food poisoning. After spending two weeks kneeling in front of a toilet seat, covered in piss, spunk and blood, I'm pretty sure you won't be shopping there again. But no, Chelsea is still the answer. Having ripped away Sean Wright Phillips, the club's only player of star quality back in 2005, they also managed to lure away a teenage Daniel Sturridge brimming with potential for just £6 million. And at further insult to injury, they made City pay double that price for a pass that Wayne Bridge, and they also dumped the fat and useless sweat patch that was Talbot and Haim on the City books. So yeah. Chelsea. Man United, Russia Dortmund. Okay, Man United's rocky relationship with Russia Dortmund it must be at an all-time low. I've said it before, they've sold them both Shinji Kagawa and Henrik Mkhitaryan, with Dortmund Chiefs just failing to mention their allergy to English football, and then Yanezai, the club's biggest prodigy, who has trusted to flourish on loan at Dortmund. Nah, they instead chose to let him rot in the cupboard, and beat them to targets in the transfer window over and over again. Not to mention, they're refusing to sell them Jadon Sancho. Lads, Dortmund have spent the last decade repeatedly putting down their pants. Newcastle, Chelsea. Yeah, Newcastle must feel like never new business with Chelsea ever again. They've been mugged off so many times. Chelsea clearly just see this club as a bunch of thick Geordies who'll stupidly buy their rubbish. It's like tricking your northern cousins into paying for the contents of your septic tank. Because in the past, Newcastle have gladly taken in Celestine Babiaro, a left back so error prone, I'm convinced he has a family of hamsters eating a hole in his brain. They've taken in Jeremy, with Chelsea failing to let them know that his legs haven't worked in three bastard years. Scott Parker and Damien Duff are promising big name sightings. Neither settled in the northeast, with the latter scoring the only goal that sent them down. Christian Atsu is all the end product of a bowl of toilet duck. Kennedy arrived on loan, with Chelsea demanding 30 million quid to make the move permanent. 30 million for a man who loses the ball about 60 times a game. In return, Chelsea are able to take Demba Ba, Newcastle's best striker since Alan Shearer, for just 7 million pounds. And then Loic Remy after a 14 goal debut season at St James's Park. He also followed bad at Stamford Bridge. It's just unfair. Norwich West Ham. Remember when West Ham used to just handpick any half decent player out of Norwich? For three years running, they returned every single summer to sign Malky Mackay, then Dean Ashton, and then Rob Green. Three big Norwich players. Uh, in return, the Canaries were forced to pay actual money for a fat Matt Jarvis. It's ridiculous. Sheffield United Everton. Yeah, Sheffield United have been mistreated by Everton so many times. Seriously, Phil Jagielka and Dominic Cavalluan were ripped out by the Vultures of Goodison Park before Everton just dumped a past it shadow of Jagielka back at Bramall Lane last summer, which is a bit like stealing someone's chewing gum and then giving it back to them after you spent three weeks with it lodged in your trachea. Pretty sure they're not going to want it anymore. Southampton Liverpool. Yeah, 
Southampton have amassed over 200 million quid from Liverpool's pocket in 2014. But in doing so, they've lost Ricky Lambert, Adam Lallana, Dale Lover, Nathaniel Klein, Sadio Mane, and Virgil van Dijk. That's they sold Mane for just 30 million quid. He's one of the best players in the world and was sold for three quarters of Joe Linton's transfer fee. Tottenham Real Madrid. Okay, it's not as if Real Madrid are knocking on Tottenham's door every transfer window, but still, they, they've done their damage. Luka Modric and Gareth Bale, Tottenham's two greatest footballers of the 21st century, were both yanked out of White Hart Lane by Madrid before they even hit their peak. Sure, they got a world transfer record for Bale, but Modric, Tottenham sold a future Ballon d'Or winner for less than what they paid for Eric Lamella. What? Watford Everton. Where do you start? Richardson, Watford's biggest talent in decades, was poached by the Toffees after just one season. And in return, Everton just dumped them with their own adulterated garbage. Tom Cleverly and midfield are so hideously bang average. West Ham Hull City. Alright, West Ham have just paid Hull City £20 million for Jared Bowen. You can almost tell what's going to happen next. Nikiki Jelovic was also brought to West Ham from Hull, and my god was he atrocious. Robert Snodgrass has not been worth the £10 million paid in January 2017. So yeah, good luck Bowen. Wolves Birmingham City. Okay, I don't care that it's one player. I don't. Roger Johnson for £7 million. I know he did well at Birmingham, but he had the mental fragility of a bag of empty Cocoa Pops. Two relegations, running up the training drunk. He was supposed to be the goddamn captain. I don't care that it's one transfer. £7 million? He's not even worth a soggy melted sock. Anyway, that's the end of it, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.